we're going to talk about another F-35 mishap. And this is the HMS Queen Elizabeth F-35B AIB report. And I've seen this on the news, but I went and found the source, which is even more difficult because uh, they love to be verbose and then not verbose at the same time. So this is the Defense Safety Authority service inquiry. There was a mishap, uh, 17 November 2021, uh, RAF F-35B Lightning registration Zulu Mike 152 ditched while attempting to launch from the HMS Queen Elizabeth. The ship was operating in the eastern Mediterranean off the north coast of Egypt. As the aircraft left the end of the deck ramp, the pilot ejected landing back on the deck. Boy, that's lucky. Uh, the aircraft impacted the sea and subsequently sank. We have a picture of that in here. The pilot suffered only minor injuries and has since returned to flying. That's cool that they put that in there. Americans don't do that. Uh, you never find out what happens to them. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the F-35B is the short takeoff, vertical landing, stovel capable aircraft developed to operate from aircraft carriers without catapults or resting gear. Uh, after a period of disbandment, the 617th Squadron reformed at the Marine Corps Air Station Buford and it returned to RAF Marham uh, later that year. <clears throat> so there you go. That's what it looks like. That's the intakes. That's the big old fan. And it's a fly-by-wire aircraft. Uh, a lot of redacted stuff. That's what the uh, QNLZ looks like. That's inside Flyco looking aft. This is the red gear. This will be important. These are the covers that go in intakes and exhausts and places, and it's designed to keep foreign object debris or pins or whatever. It's it's designed. It's for when the aircraft is just tied down and, and not doing anything cool. But that's what it looks like when everything is installed. It's bright red so that you can see it and therefore not have any kind of issues. Um, pardon me while I begin here. I have overshot. Oh, God, I'm lost. Uh, here we go. There was a FOD walk conducted very early that morning, and then the first aircraft launched at 6.45. Uh, he took off an exhaust blank, was dislodged from a UK aircraft on Knuckle Alpha. It rolled to fly one section, entered the catwalk away from the runway, and was recovered by aircraft handlers. Flyco were informed that the blank had been secured. Gonky, do you know what a blank is? No. Nope. Exhaust blank? Maybe it's the... I don't, I don't know. Deuce? What? The idea? This is all British. No. Uh, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so they reported that another exhaust blank was seen to fall past the aft reception point. So they were having some issue with red gear here. Um... Also, the aircraft blank was reported, and the ICC raised a DASOR for the lost. Uh, aircraft sea off. When land based, the sea off was normally conducted by one or two engineers. Each pilot's walk around included an inspection of both engine intakes, the exhaust, and general visual inspection of the aircraft. Due to the noise on the flight deck, they wear their helmets throughout the walk around. They noticed the undercarriage pins weren't still installed and removed them and handed them to the sea off team. Once inside the cockpit, he visually conducted a set of tests and visbit. Is Visbit part of your F-35, Deuce? Is this familiar yes, to you? Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, they had some rainwater, but they believe from a thunderstorm the night prior. They completed, and it had minor issue with aircraft nav navigation system. Seahawk team refueled the aircraft during the start sequence. Uh, this was routine. Uh, so the two ship uh, were the first F-35B flights of the day. Taxied first to the runway. The ship was sailing at a steady speed of five knots, which gave them 12 knots over the deck. The ship completed pre-launch checks and was returned on to the designated fly course to achieve the necessary window over the fly deck. Right as the ship to launch was relayed from fly code to the flight deck from the captain of the flight deck, signaled this to the BK-18 pilot. The pilot then initiated the conversion, like a transformer, to a stovel configuration, and the next part's redacted. Then they ejected. So we redacted the cool part and then just ejected. Uh, he assumed the position, uh, the pilot cleared the aircraft, seat separated, parachute deployed. Once descending in the chute, he uh, noticed a ship approaching from behind and prepared to land on the deck. Combination of wind form movement and the swing of the chute meant the pilot landing on deck six feet to the right of the takeoff ramp, three feet back from the front edge. Uh, his canopy snagged on the ramp, light shroud, and then uh, his PSP was hanging over the front of the ship, identifies the risk of being dragged overboard, so they disconnected. Good lord. Uh, a lot of metric stuff here that I'm not going to read. Pilot appeared unharmed, fully conscious, and in good spirit. I love that. 
The pilot was keen to stand up, declaring they were fine. So you, so you know it's British. Uh, I, yeah, I love it. I love the language. You would never see this in an American AIB. As the pilot walked back along the deck, attempts were made by Flyco to contact the flight deck team to encourage the pilot to remain immobile on the flight deck until medical attention was administered. <laughs> Bugger off, mate. I've got this. Um Post-crash management, one of the cameras showed the aircraft floating on the surface, semi-submerged. I believe that became viral. But with the wings, tail, lift fan, and aux doors, several witnesses saw a large red object pushed up and out of the auxiliary intake on top of the aircraft. The seaboat was sent to recover the debris, which was subsequently identified. That's what they found in the water. The left intake blank was recovered. Uh And salvage operations continued. After falling into the sea, it went down to 2,000 meters inverted. With a minor part, such as the ejection seat detached but close to the airframe, a salvage operation recovered the aircraft and all detached items and then transported them back. Oh, ah, yeah, a little WD-40, it'll be fine. Uh, look at that thing, man. Oof. That's, oof. Uh, so the analysis and findings, oh boy. Oh. Uh, he ditched attention to launch, ejected, and then returned. Uh, he has since, re- oh wow, I'd skip. That's what happened. Ah, okay, of course. Shortly after the pilot ejected was seen floating, uh, they found the the little red guy right there. That's bad, and that's what they have determined. It did not make enough thrusties to go flying, and I love that they were used by the HM government as a vehicle for delivering the vision of Global Britain around the world. Um, recommendation was that they should provide direction guidance regarding the division of flight serving tasks. So basically they said during the servicing, two crews were working on this aircraft and one kind of got distracted doing a peripheral task. The other was doing another task. So nobody actually QC'd that both intake covers were gone. Uh, And so they basically said they should provide direction guidance regarding division of flight servicing tasks between multiple engineers in order to maintain airworthiness. Convinced part of their servicing just after midnight, only piece of the regular they reserved was the exhaust bank lying on the deck. When they returned to issue center, they discovered the weather was windy and upper surfaces of the aircraft were uh, wet from rain. They elected not to climb on top of the aircraft and carry out the upper surfaces inspection. So the panel noted that the mission of the part of the flight servicing was neither recorded in the airworthiness or deviation registers nor authorized by any orders. Uh, and then flight deck a- activity, it's very hazardous. So a two man rule was in place. Uh, so they recommended that they should define the procedures for solo working uh, on the decks and ensure safety personnel working on the deck at night. And then they remarked that torches used for working on the flight deck at night had to be fitted with blue, green or red filters to prevent their night vision from being affected. Uh, there you go. And then the red gear removal obviously is the biggest thing here. So a lot of stuff. Uh, they determined that following a series of red gear issues occurring that evening until the loss on the 17th of November, none of which were recorded in the red gear log. So they have a whole log for this. Uh, exhaust blank fell out. And then in the panel's opinion, is if 100% check of all the red gear had been carried out after a mass removal and been completed, the left intake blank would have likely been noticed as missing. In a subsequent search, it would likely be discovered. You remember that gonky where one tool is missing and it grounds the entire operation until they find the, the missing tool. Um, yep. So, and that's that's pretty much it. All of the cool stuff's redacted. We don't know any of the speeds, but he decided to attempt the abort and the aircraft was traveling at a speed and he had just started up the ramp with some takeoff roll remaining. He elected to abort, selected idle and applied the brakes. Engine increased to 80% engine thrust required. So he obviously pushed it up, realized this thing's not doing what it should do. I need to abort. And he just ran out of ideas, airspeed, and space. Uh, but so here's one douche you might appreciate. The arm and leg restraint system was designed to pull the pilot's limbs in a position to protect from the effects of wind shear and prevent injury during ejection. The leg restraint system worked correctly, but the arm sh- restraint extension line, ARL w- rings, did not pull had not pulled to the wrist as designed. The left A-roll did not move on the jacket. The right A-roll had broken the red retaining tie, but remained above the mid-bicep position, so neither restraints restrained the arms correctly. They could not conclusively determine the cause, but likely two reasons. First, it may have been too long for the pilot. Second, the white whistles through which the A-roll are supposed to be routed could have become dislodged, leading to incorrect, incorrect A-roll lug riding, routing. This incorrect routing appear normal to user, but would cause them to be ineffective. Poor fitting of the restraint could result in increased likelihood of injury. But since this was low speed, 
it was in a deuce. Does this something you know about? Yeah. So that's the a rolls like it's talking about. So basically on your flight suit or on the jacket, as you have pictured there above, um, on either side that goes down the arm, there's these lines basically. And then out of the line, there's a, basically a clip that goes into the, uh, the center, basically, um, buckle that everything comes together on for the ejection seat. This isn't the first time that that, that that's happened. I can't really reference the other, uh, incident, but that's a common thing. We also asked the, all the, uh, Lockheed instructors about this during the transition course and even Lockheed can give a straight answer on how those were supposed to behave. This is a British design, right? Like the whole seat. Yeah, that's 100% British. You, you know what I mean? So like everything in this jet comes from a different place, you know, different money, of course. And so, yeah, that's 100% a British uh, thing. And that um, particular item is made in, yeah, England. Yeah. Also, the LP life preserver was not inflated by the pilot during the ejection. It was sent to our RAF cam for ex examination testing. During the inflation test, one of the stoles failed to inflate. Failure was similar to a recent failure on the Hawk. So mm. uh, is that something you know about, Deuce? No, I don't. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough on that that uh, report because it's, I mean, it's a lot of pages, like 100. And, um, but yeah, so the, the bottom line really is, Number one, we're glad the pilot's okay, not pilot error, you know, poor procedures. They lost the, the red gear, which is the intake cover, whether it was from another plane or from them, and then didn't make enough thrusties, not enough thrusties trying to go up a ramp. Bad things happen to good people. Gonky, you back? You working now? It's all smooth to me, man. I'd rather land in the water. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's like... The flight deck's like 10 grit sandpaper. I do love how this one's written, though. It is very easy to picture the British gentleman like pushing people off, being like, I got this. I'm fine. You know, he was not keen to come back and give me another jet. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs>